My name is Larissa. I am a huge Sailor Moon fan and cosplayer. So this part of my channel will focus on all things Sailor Moon, whether it's DIYs, tutorials, how-tos for cosplay pieces or crafty ideas, um, makeup tutorials, whatever. So anything Sailor Moon inspired. So today is my first episode. Um, we're going to focus on my favorite little anime kitty, Luna. So I'm going to show you how to make this really cute ball cap um, inspired by Luna. It is um, just a normal black ball cap and then the whole front is sewn with a fleece material and a little felt moon and ears. So most of the tutorial will be hand sewn. Um, I rated this tutorial to be easy so pretty much anyone can do it. Um, yeah. So stay tuned for the tutorial part and see you soon. So we'll be making these patterns today. We'll need a cat ear pattern. You'll need to cut out four of those. You'll need a base either folded in half or the full piece. I decided to recycle my paper so I only did half of the base since we're going to do it on the center fold anyways. And yeah. So let's get started. You will need um, some piece of paper, a pencil, a ruler, some felt, I'm just using some scrap yellow felt for Luna's crescent moon on her head. I am using some scrap black fleece. You can get a quarter of a yard and do the same thing I'm doing here. Paper scissors, fabric scissors, needles, and your black hat. Mine is from the dollar store. You will also need a hand sewing needle. You will also need some matching thread, um, mine is black. You also need a bobbin for your machine, a um, sewing machine, and hot glue gun. And one more thing, you'll need some polyfill. First things first, we got to make those patterns. I am getting started on my kitty ears. I'm just using some paper I have laying around my house. You're more than welcome to recycle some newspaper, which is always good, go green. And here I am laying up the paper against my hat to see just how tall I would like my kitty ears to be. Um, yeah, I don't want them to be too small, so it was kind of a, you know, wagering out just how noticeable I want my kitty ears to be. But as some of you know, I have no problem being nerdy and out there, so um, mine ended up being pretty noticeable. Um, my final measurement was about 5 inches wide and 4 inches tall. I know that sounds like a big number, but you have to consider seam allowance here, and since this is fleece and we're going to be sewing at least attaching the front and back of the kitty ears through the sewing machine, you want to have plenty of room to work with. And um, if we're sewing so close to the edge, it's a little hard and it might suck that right into the machine. So I would like at least of a quarter inch to sew on. So there you go. So I'm using my fleece fabric and laying out on top of my um, healing mat here. And I'm cutting out my ears one by one. I am using my pens to secure it to the fabric because it is so fleece and fluffy that I don't want to move around and accidentally get the wrong measurement. You're more than welcome to use a rotary cutter here, but I prefer to use my scissors since again it is so fluffy and this is such a particular shape. I wanted to take my time with this. So after you've cut out all your ears, we need to do the base pattern for the front part of the ball cap. So this is on a curve, it's a little rough to do, but what I'm doing is taking the paper and lining it up right up against where the bill attaches to the rest of the hat. And I'm, I'm using what's left of the paper from before, so I'm only doing a half pattern for the front. Um, this just saves paper and you're cutting on the fold anyway, so you really don't need the other side, but if it helps you do the full pattern like I said before in the beginning of the video um, and so I laid it up against the hat and stenciled it out and then added seam allowance and like I mentioned before since it's fluffy fabric I added a quarter inch on the outside thus the two lines so after you have cut out your paper pattern make sure you leave notes on there that you only need one and a cut on the fold use your fabric fold in half line up the fold of the pattern on the fold of the fabric and pin it in place. Then you'll need to cut it out with your fabric scissors. Take your time. Um, this is very fluffy fabric, again, so we don't want to mess up the really neat shape that we created. Um, you'll begin to have a little 
little specks of a mess of fabric everywhere, um, as you can see on mine. And yeah, next we're gonna take our little piece of fabric here and line it up against the hat. So that seam allowance, you're gonna roll in and on the rolled hem edge, you're going to line it up against where the bill connects to the hat and then the rest of the way up where the seam is from the next part of the hat. So I am attaching the two front seams, not the one in the middle of the face, but the two side ones, um, pretty much parallel to where your ears and eyes would be. But I'm just taking my time to, again, um, use that rolled edge to um, line it up against that seam line. So everything looks really pristine and really nice. Um, this can be kind of finicky because my fabric has a little bit of a stretch. So I am using um, a thing that I call um, directional pinning where the, the pearl of the pin is on the inside and the sharp part faces out. Um, this helps me get those weird edges and uh, pin really next to each other really close. Um, this will help me later when I hand sew it. This can be a really tough part in the top where the little button-like thing the very top of the head is. Because it's such a high curve right there, it's going to be very, very picky. But just take your time, wiggle the fabric around, and roll the hem accordingly to fit into the place of the seam and right below the little button top of the hat. Next up, we're going to be doing some hand sewing. So take about a arm's length worth of thread and thread it through your hand sewing needle and tie off the end. Here, I'm going to be doing a whip stitch where you take your time working on the top side of your project and taking the fabric of the actual hat and the hem line where we had made the rolled hem and pulling the needle through. Um, I'm taking my time here because I don't want my sewing like to be really noticeable. So I'm just going really slow and the fleece fluffy like fabric is actually covering up a lot of the work, um, which is kind of cool because it looks really professional. Um, but uh, yeah, it doesn't matter to me and if it was, was I think that it kind of looks cool seeing stitching sometimes. Um, anyway, so when you make it to the part where the bill connects to the hat, that's the stiffest part. So I decided to do um, a really quick stitch, really wide, um, pulling my needle all the way through and going all the way to the edge. I'm going to do another whip stitch later on top to reinforce it because that'll be the toughest part when I wear the hat. Um, I don't want it to come undone. So now I'm just pinning my ear, my little ears we cut out earlier together. Um, you'll be, need to be taking two sides to make one. I am pinning them about a quarter of an inch away from each other because I want to make sure everything's pinned in place. Now you'll need it, your sewing machine. Make sure you are doing a straight stitch. Mine is a number eight. Um, make sure you do a forward and back um, when you're done with your stitch. Um, you only need just a straight stitch for this um, because it's not something that's gonna be like having to hold a lot of weight, so it's more decorational. So after you have completed going forward and back the straight stitch to create the shape of the ear, you will need your polyfill. We're gonna turn our ears inside out and Taking about a handful of polyfill, I'm gonna roll it up into my hands and stuff it into the ears until I feel like they are plush and beautiful. Polyfill can get kind of messy, especially when they, you've got a cat around who wants to lay in your project. So I just take the polyfill and roll it into my hands into a ball so everything kind of stays together. After you have stuffed both ears, we're going to place the ears up against the hat. They're looking so cute. I'm going to use two pins to keep them in place so my hand sewing doesn't get all crazy. And we're going to do another whip stitch here. Gently going around, you will have to sew around where the rolled hem of the little kitty ear attaches to the hat. Um, this is going to take some time. Make sure your stitches aren't too far apart because we don't want your little ear to fall off. And again, I have a little bit of a fuzzy mess going on from the fabric. That's okay, just take your time and get all the fuzzies out of the way while you're going. This is probably the most time consuming part because the ears are a shape and they're fluffy and it can get kind of tough. Um, here you'll see me doing another whip stitch to reinforce the bill 
to um, our little fabric pattern for the front of the fuzzy hat fleece part. Um, so before I just did an easy stitch um, up and under, up and under before. Now I'm doing a whip stitch in the top. This was really hard because it's really stiff right here. I just took my time and went really slow around. Everything's reinforced. The hat looks super cute. I'm really happy. But our hat is not done. We need our crescent moon. So I'm just using some scrap yellow gold uh, <laughs> felt I have laying around the house. Um, you are more than welcome to buy a full sheet of it. Uh, or if you feel like something else would be great here, go ahead and use it. I'm just using felt because it's easy and I happen to really like felt because it's easy and fun to work with. So I'm cutting out a circle. Um, I found that the best way to do the crescent moon is to start off with a circle shape first. Mine's about the shape of a dollar coin and then go in and gently cut out the inside of the crescent moon. You're more than welcome to use a pen here or a pencil but I didn't want any chances of seeing that on the underside of the felt um, any markings or whatnot so I didn't want to do that. Oh it looks so cute, yay! <laughs> um, so now you will need your glue gun to keep it in place. Um, I am using my high temperature mini glue gun. It's been my best friend for a long time. Um, I'm just doing a very thin layer of hot glue on the edge of the crescent moon. Um, and I try to stay uh, not too close to the edge because I don't want any of the hot glue to, to like sandwich out of it and ruin my fabric because there's really no saving it after that. But gently placing it in place and just tapping it with my fingers and oh my gosh, it's done, I'm so happy. I'm very, very happy the way it's turned out. Um, it's pretty darn cute. Um, I'm really excited to be able to wear this hat um, out in public, especially if I'm hanging out with my friends who also get my nerdy Sailor Moonness and other fans and um, pretty happy the way it turned out. Yay! And this was marked easy because I wanted everyone to get a shot at it. We did it! I really hope you enjoyed this DIY. I know I really enjoyed making it. And uh, yeah, so there's a few things I probably would have done differently. I know Luna is normally seen with the little pink hollows. Um, so I probably would have added that this time around. I just thought it'd be really cute kind of to have this discreet but really obvious <laughs> Luna hat so you could wear it with anything. So if you're wearing it to like the beach or hanging out with your friends, people are like, oh, oh, you're Luna. Um, and that would be really cool. So I did that. Um, that's why I did this one designed like this. Um, another way to doing it differently would be I probably would have done like maybe a uh, maybe splash of color back here or the uh, me do Sailor Moon written on the back or something like that. So that would have been cool. But this was me again a little simpler so people could do this on rated easy. And yeah, if you have any questions about my current hat that I'm wearing on my head, this is my Luna ears that I sell on my Etsy shop. I sell them in the purple variation and Artemis and Diana as well. And yeah, if you're interested in those, I will leave a um, <laughs> link in the description box. I really hope you enjoyed this DIY. I'm looking forward to making more videos. If you have any suggestions of what you would like to see Taylor Moon inspired, please let me know. Thanks for watching and have a magical day. Bye!